Hello and welcome back to this, the second part of our short tutorial series where we are looking at the image tool from Pixar Renderman. So it's part of Renderman Studio and we've been looking at how it actually benefits us in production. Now, unfortunately, I've had to restart Maya, not due to anything to do with Renderman, but to do with the um, screen capture software, which I've been using. And um, it causes a few glitches, particularly when I'm tr trying to do some things between um, the image tool and Slim. So it's nothing to do with Renderman. It has to do with Cam Studio, which they're both very good pieces of software. They're just not necessarily built to work together. Let's go back and have a look at just launching the image tool. So to make sure it's working, we go to Render Man Render Options, go to Display, Preview Style, have our bit depth set to 32, and let's go to Render, Okay, which brings up our image tool catalog window as it's known. Okay, Now, I want to actually make sure that this is always on top because that makes it much easier for me to deal with anything I'm doing. So I right click in the window and I go to always on top. Okay. Let's hide this now, our disposable, we don't need it. In the first tutorial, we had a look at quite a few of the view tools. So we looked at reset pan, fit image, zoom in, zoom out. Also looking at the shortcut keys, which we can use for that. So if we just go to under drag and we have Oops, let's just set our shortcut keys here under drag to pan. So we can actually pan here and zoom in and out. Okay, so it's the general um, behavior out of the box. So let's just go view and reset pan zoom. Okay, a couple of extra things that we can look at here from the view window here are the RGB alpha and luminance values. So these can be accessed either by using the right click menu and view, or they can be accessed using the keyboard one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, they can be useful to people at times, not something I would tend to use greatly myself. For the next section we'll be looking at, which is what most of this tutorial will be about, we'll be looking at the window which is referred to as the it window. So we can either right click, go down to windows and go to it, or we can control and R, which will raise it. So that's the window here, which contains the actual images which we're rendering. So if I hit re-render, we'll see we've got another render going on here. Now this will become important in the next sequence of um, commands which we're looking at here, which are under image. The first of these, which we're going to look at, is custom view. I'll just re-render this a few more times, so I've got three different images, exactly the same image, but rendered slightly differently. Okay. Um, if I enable custom view on one of these, I can either work here or I can work here. And for clarity, I'll be working in the it window here. This is referred to as the it window. This is the catalog viewer here. If I right click and go to custom view, we can see that this little green button here brightens up. What I can now do is I can zoom in to this particular um, view, render, and in the other views, it remains as they were previously. So it's zooming individually between each of them. If I turn off custom view here, the view and pan is the same between all of the renders within our catalog. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We can enable custom view in one, or we can enable custom view in two or three. For instance here, I can just um, pan across here. I can move down here. If I make another render here, let me just go and re-render. So we've got two that have custom view and two that don't. So if I work through them, we'll see the first one has a custom view, second one hasn't. And we can again right click and turn off custom view to make them all the same view. Okay, 
may be useful to you. Just knowing what the button does can be quite handy to start with. Okay, so the next thing which we want to do is having a look here at, for instance, with this E3 here, I can set it as a background image. So right click, background. This becomes important when we move on to the next section, which we'll be looking at what happens when we drag. Okay. I want to have an image which is different, which is slightly different from this. So I'm going to turn down my sampling for my environment light. I'm going to turn it down to two, which will give us awful result. Okay, so that's the sampling turned down to two. Now, because I've set my background to this image here, and if I go to right click and drag and set it to wipe. What I can now do is I can drag across the scene and see the effect between the two different renders. So this is my background and this is my foreground. Or in actual fact, anything which is selected, whatever is selected in purple, will be my foreground. So let's just, oops. So that will be the background. Let me just make sure I've got our drag set to wipe. No, I was wrong. It is just the one which is on, to, on the top, so it is a background. My bad, my wrong. Apologies for that. Okay, so the next thing which is quite useful to us here with image, we can save out images and reload images, delete, put in image sequences and generate a flipbook, which we'll possibly have a look at in a future tutorial. But what I want to look at here quickly is what the other things that we can do with the drag button are. I'm going to ignore multi because it can be quite confusing. Pan is the one which is by default most useful. So it allows us, if I can just get my mouse to work again, my mouse is just being a little bit stroppy. So I can actually pan around. Makes perfect sense, I'm sure. But right click and go to drag, crop. Crop draws a region which will be the next region to be rendered. Now, while I've dragged out this red line here, I'm going to just turn off my background for that. And I go to re-render. Only what's within this red line is now being rendered. So I can actually tweak my render settings here and go from two samples up to 64 again. See what that looks like, re-render. Okay, so I'm not re-rendered the whole scene. And again, if I go to drag and crop, just click in the window. Next time I re-render, it'll re-render the entire scene. Now, this next operation, which I'm about to show you, is actually what was causing my machine to um, misbehave earlier. The next drag option is, in actual fact, a drag option to copy, copy the color. Okay. Now, this was causing a conflict because of my capture software. My capture software is Chem Studio, which is lovely, but it takes up some of the um, screen buffer, so it may not actually let me do this. I'm going to try it again and see if I can do it. I may be able to do it by pausing, may not. Let's see. What I should be able to do with drag, you can see that when I click on a space here, it actually picks up a color swatch. Anywhere on the screen picks up a color swatch, and that is capable of being dragged into, for instance, Slim. Just sparking up Slim here, which is, again, our Renderman Studio alternative to um, alternative to Hypershade. Excuse me, going a little bit mental there. So let's just make a new palette file, a new palette. Um, and in this palette, I'm going to put in a surface. Let's just put in a surface, which is going to be a material, say, a GP surface. Okay, so what can happen if it lets us is I can drag between here and here, but it won't let me do it while I've got my screen capture on. So believe me, this does work. I'm going to stop this, just going to see if, if pause will help. And indeed, it won't let me do it at all when I'm... Um, 
when I'm working with Camp Studio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call a halt now, um, cut this particular tutorial short, and I will just drag this while you can't see it happening. But it does happen. So trust me, it does happen.